Hello again everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to Banished. Here we are at the end of year 11 in the town of Xanadu. Now recently we've started to build ourselves a wonderful little trading post, which is gradually getting completed. Once it does, we'll be able to trade our excess goods in exchange for new things, which will do us a very much good. Things like new animals we'll be able to raise, and eventually seeds that we'll be able to plant to grow into trees, and otherwise crops, which are going to be growing over in this district, which we've recently deforested. We've also started to building some new started to build up rather some new homes over in this part of town, where hopefully we'll be able to start up some new families and keep our civilization running well. Why are you taking fish out of this home? There's a lot of food in that home, holy cow. But yeah, we're gonna hopefully be able to deal with that fairly quickly and things should keep going well for us. We've also built up a first fishing fishing dock to check if the fish population really gives us what we're looking for here. And it looks like it is. 874 fish is a pretty good haul. It's about double of what you get of any one resource at a gatherer's hut. And that's that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. That's really what I was looking for from these things. Because in my first attempt at building them, I found that really you didn't get what you wanted out of them. You get about 600 to 500 fish a season. And really, that was not sufficient. Uh, given that you can get easily double that with a single gatherer's hut and the same number of workers, it seemed to me that it was just better to never bother building fishing docks. But this is a pretty good, pretty good haul, and the, the fact that it gave us leather last time is exceptionally strange. I'm looking forward to seeing if they give us more leather at the end, or if it was just a weird fluke that time that somehow we managed to produce leather in our fishing hut somehow. Getting fish leather seems like a very strange thing. Either way, we're going to drop down some of our builders to labor, since we don't need that many anymore. And we're going to let people produce a little bit more. Hopefully, by the time we're done finishing our trader's hunt, we'll be able to move some of these herbs over there, because we have a whole ton of them. We don't need that many by far. We'll drop ourselves probably down by up 400 herbs, and that should give us more than enough to buy anything that we want. Now we're going to slow down time again briefly here, because we're already at the point where we don't need any builders again, so let's dump them back into laborer jobs so we can gather more wood and stone and whatnot. And with our trading post, we need to have at least one person working there. They bring in the resources that you need. I normally only use one for now, since the traders don't come by often enough. And I'm going to put in 400 herbs. There we go. That should be enough to trade with most people, since I believe herbs normally trade at a value of 4, which means we have about 1,600 resources worth of buying power, which is enough to buy new seed types if we really want to, or to buy a couple of animals if someone comes by with something like pigs or cows for us to buy. Beyond that, we could try and move over some of our tools. We have a good supply of those, more than we need, so we can put 100 tools over here as well. And since we've got a lot of them, we could even put over some of our hide coats, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for now. Well, we'll put, we'll put a couple of them. We'll put 40 hide coats over there. I have a feeling we don't want to put too many of those. If we sell them and run out, we'll be in trouble. Same with our tools, and same with our herbs, really. But we should be okay with this for now. So, we're going to leave that be, and that should be fine. I'm a little bit interested to see how these houses, way over in the middle of nowhere, handle the winter, though, because it's a long walk to get anything like uh, wood or food for your home. So we'll see how they handle it. Because if they have to come all the way over here to our stockpiles, it might be a little bit troublesome for them. Either way, we're going to speed things up a little bit and see what happens here. I'm also interested in seeing if we can actually get enough wood and whatnot. And we're at the herb limit. No... Let's raise that herb limit up. Let's raise that up to a thousand. There's no reason to have a limit on herbs as far as I can tell because they pick them at a constant rate. So all you're really doing is telling your people that they're not allowed to work for no reason. So let them keep doing it. There seems to be no reason not to. We're up to another 18 laborers though, which is very nice. That should really help deal with our resource situation here. And we've made it to spring again. Fantastic. I'm interested in seeing what our first trader has to offer, so which is partially why I'm speeding forward so fast. Also wanted to check this. Total of a thousand fish, no leather this time. So the leather must have been a fluke, I think. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, because that seems very strange. I was pretty sure you didn't get any leather from that building. There we go, though. So that's good. We'll keep building up our resources. We're, we've dropped a whole bunch of resources off here. Perfect. And we'll be able to do some trading once a uh, trader finally arrives. we got a good stockpile of wood. I'm looking now to build ourselves a church this, ses this episode. Go back down to five times speed. I think a church is what we want next. That or the town hall. The town hall is pretty cool, too. Maybe we'll build ourselves a town hall right over here. I think we'll build the church over on the side of it and the town hall right... Actually, right there seems good. It does take a ton of stone, though. A lot of iron, a ton of stone. 
but it does give us access to a bunch of useful pieces of information and gives us the ability to welcome uh, travelers to our city, which can be good for boosting up your population in a hurry. So we might as well try and build one, because I'd like to have some of the census data that they allow us access to once we've completed it. And that would be very nice to have indeed. So, we're going to tell them to start building that, even though we know it's not going to be feasible for a while until they can actually get the stone underway. But it should be fine for now. So, we have 18 laborers. We'll put a couple of those guys into building jobs so they can get a little bit of work done here producing our town hall. And we're going to make sure that we have a good number of other resources set to be picked up, like our stone and whatnot that lies over here. So, we tell them to grab this button, grab some stone, grab all that stone in there. That stone as well. Grab the iron in here too, because why not? But mostly right now we're after stone, so we'll make sure that all this is set to be picked up. I think it all is already, which is fair enough. I think all of this stone is already set to be picked up. Yes, it is. So we just have to wait for them to actually get around to doing it, or we can try and prioritize it in particular if we're really determined to get it right now. But I'm not really determined to get it right now. I'm quite happy to have a good number of wood, iron, and stone coming in at the same time. So that's fine by me. I am looking to get our first trader hopefully sometime soon though, because I'd like to see what they have to offer us. Sometimes they have some really good deals, sometimes they don't. But we'll take our chances and we'll see what we get from them. Oh. Alright, we've got a bunch of new children coming in again. Our children population is getting fairly low though, so we are going to want to build some more houses soon. We also want to make sure we don't go over our food budget, so really there's a lot of stuff we have to be thinking about right now. I think we're going to build a couple more homes over here, though, to make sure we don't let our population get too old. We'll build up to five. That'll do. Now, if we extend our road over this way, that should handle that. But we are going to want to build ourselves some more food resources as well. So I think we're going to go for a couple more fishing huts, since apparently that works really well. Now, this is going to be our second test. We're going to build this fishing dock over here, somewhere that is not as well surrounded by water. It is still in a fairly effective place, but it's not as perfect. So I'm interested in seeing... Let's actually just spin this camera around here for a second. Let's see the back side of it. There we go, that looks good. Put it flush up against our trader, because why not? And we'll be able to see now if the fishing dock actually works as well when it doesn't have quite as high an exposure to the water, which is something I've wanted to test for a while. So this is a good way to do it, because this guy has a massive water area. This one has probably about half as much. Well, maybe maybe two-thirds. So we'll see if that affects the production rate at all, or if it's just something that effect is affected uh, by the number of people working and maybe seasonal conditions. Because if it doesn't matter, that'd be interesting to know, and it must have just been that, like, there weren't a lot of fish in the river that I was fishing in my original game. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, we're going to put some more people on build jobs, because we have a lot of things that need building right now. And we have a lot of wood and stone and whatnot coming in, which is awesome. So... With that said, we're going to leave it at five times speed because this seems to be a pretty good rate at which we can do work. And I'm looking forward to getting our first trader. I'm surprised we haven't had one yet. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. People will keep producing coats and tools and whatnot, so eventually we can buff, buff these numbers up if we want. But uh, I'm not too worried at the moment. We have a pretty hefty supply as it is. I am going to put a second herbalist to work, though. I think that's the only one of these locations that actually has an herbalist. Yeah, we have a Foresters there, a Hunter Cabin, and Gatherer's Hut. They're all working at more or less maximum capacity. Same over here, there's no herbalist there. Two herbalists, I find, are enough to supply for more or less your entire population for a fairly long time. Eventually, you might start to need more or more than one herbalist, but really, I find they do a pretty good job, as it is. So, we have a lot of homes being built, we have our town hall gradually being built, we have another fishing hut being built, we have a lot of things underway. I could specify exactly what I want them to build, but at the moment I'm quite happy to let them prioritize it at their own rate, because honestly, none of these tasks are particularly higher priority than another. It looks like they're starting to build the homes first, which is interesting, but really it's not like we need one over the other. The fishing hut... It'd be good to get the fishing hut done when they finish the homes. We have a huge influx of food coming in right now, so I'm not too worried. Same with over here. I'd like to get the town hall finished, but it's going to take a while, so I'm not super hurried about it. Looks like they're doing a good job of choosing their own tasks, though, and hopefully we'll get it finished before too long. Like I said, though, I'm really in no rush. 
One thing we want to watch out for when building fishing huts, though, is that we don't build them too close together. That area of effect, if you're trying to overfish an area, that can be a problem. As long as you give yourself some space around your fishing docks, though, you should be fine. And in a massive lake like this, we have plenty of space to build our fishing huts without impinging on each other. Also, something I wanted to test earlier is that it should be possible for us to build across this entire lake, except for the fact that there's a mountain there. So if we aim somewhere a little bit different, we should be able to reach across the entire thing, no problem, with a bridge. So just to test it, we're going to try and run a bridge all the way across here. <laughs> and that works. We can make an 183 st tile bridge. It costs 732 wood and 183 stone to do. But we could theoretically do it if we were insane. Awesome. Alright, the things you can do in this game for some reason. We have lots of people growing up and becoming laborers, which is great. We have a 56 adult population now, which is really nice. But we have to be aware that we're getting lower on children, which is something that can be a bit concerning if our population gets too old. And we're also very low on iron, surprisingly enough. Although I would assume it's because we're using it all to build our town hall right now. And hopefully, and hopefully our workers will be able to actually gather more pretty quickly. There is a whole bunch of iron nearby that we've set people to grab. And if not, we're going to make sure we set them to grab it. Like all of this. There we go. Grab all that. Grab all this. Tons of iron nearby. I believe there's more over here as well. Yep, lots of iron within very close grabbing range. Swing over this way, make sure we got everything in this area. I knew there was some over hiding in there. There we go. Lots of iron for us to grab very easily. So that should not be a problem. Once our civilization starts to get more of those resources, we won't have to worry about it anymore, and we'll be even better off. There we go. So... I'm not too worried about them not having the resources they need to finish this thing, though, because they'll get them over time, and they do have a lot of laborers. I'm going to drop the, la the builder force by a little bit so we get more people doing the labor jobs we need when they can't actually construct that uh, town hall anyway. Soon they get another house finished, and there'll be even more happy people living in these homes. That does mean, though, that we're going to need more woodcutters, because we won't be able to keep up with the demand as easily. But I might just buff the fuel limit up to 500, which should help us deal with the increased demand. That extra 200 firewood barrier should help us make it through winters a little bit safer. This is a really early winter though. It's hitting us already in late autumn, which is not the best. We're low on firewood, we're low on iron. But we should be able to keep ourselves at a pretty decent supply, and then eventually once this is finished, our, our iron stockpiles won't constantly be drained. Which would be good. Good indeed. For now, though, we're looking pretty solid. We have a pretty hefty amount of extra food. Ooh, we have our first trader arriving there. Let's slow down time here for a minute. There we go. Our merchant has arrived at the trading post. Hey there, chum. What do you have to offer us? You're offering berries, cabbage, and fish. Unfortunately, that doesn't help us very much. I was right. Herbs are about four value. Tools are eight, and hide coats are 15. So we can get a lot of value just by selling a couple of these. We get 600 units of value by selling those. We could get a pretty massive value by selling all of our herbs. That'll give us about 1,600. And we can get a good amount from selling our tools as well, about 800. So if we really want to buy things, we have the resources with which to do it. We could even sell food if we really wanted to, but food isn't very valuable. Food sells at about a one-to-one -one rate, as you can see here. So I prefer to not sell food if I need to. I like to have that backup barrier, all of our food, be safe. And use other, more luxury items instead. Now that'll do for now. We'll let him leave. Unfortunately, our first trader didn't have what we were really looking for, but I'm sure we'll be able to get some good stuff from them later. So, that'll have to do. Now, our town hall is getting constructed, so let's take a look at this thing while it's being built and put our time back up to a decent five times speed so we can get this done a little bit quicker. But yeah, this, this building is very interesting once you get it finished. It offers you a whole bunch of really interesting information, which we'll take a look at once it gets completed. We're going to want to build a church soon, too. We have a lot of stone, so we should be able to do it, because the church doesn't really take much iron. It's mostly stone that we need to build another chapel. So we'll build one of those in here as well, and it should be able to accommodate our population for a long time. I'll probably set that to be constructed once this winter gets a little bit more close to being over. I'm always interested in seeing how these guys actually build it up, though. The, uh, I really like the look of most of the buildings in this game. They're pretty nice. It takes them a while to build these bigger projects. Like, 160 build is, is quite a bit, so we'll come back and check up on that in a bit. But it's interesting. It's interesting nonetheless. Our wood supply and our firewood is basically just able to cope from the looks of things here. They're able to produce wood just fast enough for the demand of the current population. 
But I am still concerned with these guys having to make the long walk over to the main part of town. We'll have to see how it really goes. The firewood reserve is low, obviously, as it ticks down and up over the same point again. It'll keep giving us that warning. This house is cold because they only just built it, so it doesn't have any firewood in it yet. It will rather quickly, but as of right now, it doesn't. And our population is going to keep growing if we keep building houses like this, so we have to be careful, really. Otherwise, things could easily get out of hand, and our food might start plummeting again. We're back up to a very healthy 3,000 food, but we could very easily drop back below that level again. We're getting new births again, which is going to mean that we're going to quickly start having <laughs> food problems again. But it does mean that our population stays stable, which is very important. There we go. We're starting to have more deaths. Ewell the Builder has died of old age. So, that is going to keep being a problem as our population ages more and more. And we're going to make sure we keep on top of it. For the time being, I'm not too worried. We've only had five old age deaths. But our population will cycle through as we go. I'm looking forward to having this building completed, though, because it offers us some very interesting information that I can't wait to take a look at. People are cold over in that house. Hopefully they get more firewood soon. And there's some in the stockpile. They just need to go grab it. There we go. They got it. All is well. All is well. I like to look at these bridges, too. Kind of nice little... I like the design of most of the buildings in this game, honestly. They look pretty cool. This building is still cold, though. I don't like that. Go get some firewood, you sillies. All right. Our town hall is finished. Fantastic. Let's slow down the game here a little. Down two times. And let's take a look here at our town hall. So this gives us a lot of different information. It has our professions board all in one place, which is kind of funny, if you couldn't use it here. This jumps you to, I believe, the, the tasks people are working on. Actually, I don't need to have six builders anymore, so I can drop that back down to two, which means we have 20 laborers, which is amazing for getting us new resources. We're going to need to deal with the food situation soon, though. It shows us information like how many homes and families we have, our total number of citizens, adults and children. We have 98% of our people are clothed, which means there must be some new citizens who don't have jackets yet. Only 53% of them are educated, though, which is interesting. As our population ages and the old people die off, we'll have a fully educated workforce, which would be really nice. A lot of people just were born and became students, which is good to know as well. We can check our production of all of our different resources, so we can see how many are being produced and how many are being used in the current season, which is very useful. Things like food, for example. We can see that in a year we produced almost 10,000 food and only 8,000 of it was actually eaten, which is very good to know. We can see it over a season as well. It's pretty cool stats we have right here. We can sh it shows us that tools and things get produced very slowly. Things like our hide clothes get produced very slowly as well. Probably because we don't have a whole lot of leather coming in, but still. We can check our exact inventories and all the different items that we have. We can check graphs of our population levels. How many children we have compared to students. What our total adults is. What our total population levels is. We can see if there's any drops in any of these particular graphs. We can also check if there are nomads requesting citizenship. And we can either allow or deny them access, depending on what we want at the time. And we can also see which of the seeds and livestock we've acquired, so we don't need to buy them again. Once you buy them once, you can use them again, at least for seeds, forever. Livestock, I imagine if you kill them all, you don't have any more left. But as long as you don't rush it and get rid of all of your livestock in one go, you should be fine. So that's our town hall. Occasionally, this is a good place to check for getting access to information like what our education levels are, what our production levels are. So it can be very useful to us. Either way, we're going to leave it for like that for now. And this should be good. What we are going to do is we're going to build ourselves our church, like I said. So we're going to put ourselves back up to five times speed, because why not? And we're going to build ourselves a church right over... Also, interestingly enough, you can only build one town hall. Makes sense. There's no reason to have more than one. But you can actually only build one. The game won't let you build... Oh, I can't build the chapel there now. Hmm. That's annoying. I was kind of looking forward to building our chapel right here. Right across from there. Right across from the school as well. But I guess it makes sense. You can't build it into the mountain. All right. Well, in that case, we have to build it a little bit differently. I think we're going to build over here on this side instead. There we go. And we'll build ourselves a bunch of graveyard space over here instead. A little bit less than ideal, though, for sure. Maybe I can swing it around on this side. That might be okay. But I don't really want to have it be way out over there. And there's a mountain there, so I can't build on this side either. Hmm. Let's take a look at this in a bit more detail then, because this is a little bit less than ideal as it happens. We're up to 60 adults now, which is crazy. Our workforce is really expanding quickly, which is really nice too. We're up to another fishing lodge as well, so we're going to set our builders to work in the fishing lodge to give us more food. That should keep dealing with our expanding population quite nicely. Alright, so... I think... I think we are going to... 
figure out where to build this church. All this church really does is it gives us a bit of a happiness boost. So it doesn't, it's not a vital building to have, but it's nice with the whole theme of your, uh, your civilization and whatnot. I might build it just like right over here next to the side so I can build the, the other cemetery in this space without having to be interrupted by the body of the church. And that also means it's a little bit closer to the rest of the town. Maybe we will build it right there. I kind of want to build it over here though at this point. Eh, why not? We'll build it there. So, it's too bad we can't build it in this space, but we'll make do with what we've got. And that way we'll be able to get ourselves uh, some spiritual help, which will give them a nice little happiness boost. Provides happiness for the devout and a place to meet and worship. Indeed. So hopefully that'll be good over there. We might want to move things around a little bit again once we get some more uh, construction going on. We have this nice little uh, infrastructure area over here with our town hall and our school. Might put another school over here. We don't really need it though, like I said, until our population gets really high. So we're not going to worry too much about it for now. I do want to try and build a hospital at some point, but not right now. I am going to build a well over near this civilization though. I think we're going to build it... Maybe build it on this side somewhere near here? Yeah, I'll build it over here. So we have access to it near these homes, because that's going to be important later. And we need some more builders again, so let's put six people back in building jobs so we can actually get these things produced. There we go. So that's good. That'll help deal with what we've got going on here. I should probably build the market over in this area, just so we actually have one, like I was talking about earlier. I don't really want to drain all the resources out of our barns, but I have a feeling that some of these people are going to prioritize the barns over the market, because it's going to be so far away. For now, though, I'm not too worried. So we'll let them finish the constructions they've got underway here. We'll let them build our church, and we'll let them build ourselves our... Uh, what's the other thing I was starting to build? Our well over here, so we can deal with fires in this part of town. And then we'll move on to some other areas. Now, I want to make sure we still have people with jobs to do. Yeah, there's lots of stuff that still needs to be removed, so I'm not too worried about them running out of tasks. But I am worried about them having cleared all the wood that I've asked them. Nope, that's all there still, too. Good. All right, so there's lots of jobs for laborers still to do. I'm not too worried about them running out of stuff yet. And we're getting a good amount of production going. We're already back up to about 205 medicines. We can bring these into the trader's hut as well once they're finished, so we can keep our trade supplies high. And I'm looking forward to hopefully getting access to some animals and some seeds soon so we can start trying to build up a farming community over in this part of town once we clear out even more of it. That is basically my plan now. Try and get some farming going on over here. I have a feeling that'll be a nice addition to our food resources, especially things like uh, dealing with animals, because it only takes one, one worker to, to manage your animals, and it gives you a gradual but permanently renewable source of meat over time, which is quite nice. Either way, it's going to take us a while to get any of this stuff completed, because there's a lot of steps to it all. So I'm in no rush here. Let's have to wait and see how it goes. Another trader would be nice as well. We'd be able to see if we can get another chance at actually getting some good resources from them. But we'll have to wait and see about that. Our food seems pretty stable as well, which is great. Our population is slowly rising again. We have more children being born as our other children grow up. These new homes are more or less the source of all the new children, which is just fine. Hopefully people who work near here are the ones who are getting this, these homes, though. Let's quickly check the paths. Where... Oh, good. Good. It's mostly people who live here near here who are actually doing the jobs near here, so that works out nicely. Hopefully, by building more homes near these areas, we'll be able to help supply our farmers with places to live that are close to their works. Ah, I know what we can do. The other building we can build near here is our brewery. Let's see how that works. Our brewery, where is it going to go? How much space does it need? It needs about this much space, which actually makes it a perfect spot for this one right here. Could we put the brewery over here if we wanted? We could. We could fit a brewery over here if we wanted. The tavern. But I have a feeling we kind of want the tavern near this end of town where we actually produce things. That seems a bit more logical to me. Hmm. I think we'll wait a little bit longer before we build our first tavern, though. I kind of want to get our church finished first. So we'll let that happen, and we'll see what else we can do here. Now, in case we are on one time speed, that would explain why nothing's getting done. Bring ourselves back to the five times speed, and watch the people fly. Either, one, <coughs> either way, rather, we're basically done here for now. We've got a lot of nice things working for us. We've got ourselves our new fishing huts. Let's double check how these guys are doing. 1,108 fish. That's pretty good. How are these guys doing? 84 fish. Previous season was three logs. Nicely done. Um, I'm sure we'll have to compare these two once they've actually had a year or two to really run. 
But uh, we've got some more houses going. We've got ourselves our town hall. We've got a bunch of other nice infrastructure buildings showing up over here, which is good. So far, I'm liking how this city's developing. It's going along quite well. We've got a lot of people now. We're getting a lot of resources in. 60 adults is amazing. Gives us a lot of free laborers to do this stuff with. I'm looking forward to seeing how we do. Either way, thank you very much for watching. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing a bit more Banished here for you. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, bye-bye.